वेलकम टू स्काई मच टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट हारमोनिक ऑसिलेटर्स एंड देन वी विल बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग इट इन क्लासिकल फॉर्म एंड ऑल्सो क्वांटम ऑसिलेटर्स लेट्स बिगिन द फर्स्ट ब्रांच ऑफ हारमोनिक ऑसिलेटर्स गोज टूअर्ड द क्लासिकल हारमोनिक ऑसिलेटर्स सो फर्स्ट वी विल लर्न अबाउट क्लासिकल हारमोनिक ऑसिलेटर्स बिकॉज वी कैन विजुअलाइज दैम सो इजिली सो इट विल बी ईजियर टू अंडरस्टैंड सो क्लासिकल हारमोनिक ऑसिलेटर एग्जाम्पल्स आर लाइक यू हैव सीन मास स्प्रिंग सिस्टम और पेंडुलम सिस्टम स्मॉल ऑसिलेशन इन पेंडुलम और यू मस्ट हैव सीन लाइक स्ट्रिंग्स ऑफ गिटार वट इज कॉमन इन दीज दे ऑसिलेट्स वॉट डू यू मीन बाई ऑसिलेट्स ऑसिलेट्स मीन्स दैट दे आर गोइंग बैक एंड फोर्थ एंड बिटवीन देयर इक्वलिब्रियम पोजिशन लाइक एग्जाम्पल आई गिव यू ऑफ अ मास स्प्रिंग सिस्टम सो इफ यू स्ट्रेच द मास टू सर्टेन डिस्टेंस लाइक एक्स यू चेंजेस द पोजिशन ऑफ द मास स्प्रिंग विल ट्राई टू स्ट्रेच द मास टूवर्ड्स इट सो दिस होल सिस्टम विल बी ट्राइंग टू कम बैक टू इट्स इक्वलिब्रियम पोजिशन बट इट विल नॉट बी एबल टू स्टॉप एट इट सो इट विल गो बैक and then it will again again some energy and come forward and then this whole process will be happening and it will be oscillating around its equilibrium position so this whole system what you see in oscillation what is common the restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement what that means is what kind of displacement you have done to the system is directly proportional means if you increase the displacement of the system or distance of the system the restoring force will depend on it restoring force will increase if you increase the displacement restoring force will be less if there is a small distance displacement if we changes this uh, proportional sign we need to have some constant mass spring system it is k spring constant because spring constant is trying to pull the mass again to the equilibrium position it is not able to do it because there is conversion of kinetic energy potential energy then potential energy to kinetic energy and this whole process is happening if i want to uh, know the system what i need to have is the equation of motion this will help me to define what is what how the system will be working what will be the acceleration what will be the velocity and everything about the system it will be very helpful so we will try to find out the equation of motion what happens to the system when it oscillates we have that equation we know the sec we know this newton second law of motion and we will be using these both and i have shown you all in both these equation we are making our equation of motion you can see this is a second order differential equation and we will also be knowing that the angular frequency is root k by m and what you also see from it that acceleration is directly proportional to the negative of the displacement that is from the equation of motion what does this mean that acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement it means the acceleration increases with the displacement and it also means that if acceleration is less displacement will be less and you can see the negative sign this negative sign shows the opposite direction of both of them like uh, if the displacement is in this direction acceleration is in opposite direction the negative sign and force is directly proportional to the displacement this negative sign is because of the restoring force this negative sign shows that the displacement and the force are in opposite direction means force is going in this direction then mass is going in this direction now what was the need of this angular frequency like you would be curious like why are we are using angular frequency in place of ru uh, k by m in the equation so first thing angular frequency angular frequency shows how fast oscillation occurs second it simplifies the mathematical solution of equation of motion and also it uh, as we know that the solution of the second order differential equation will be in sin and cos so we want something that can be defined in sin and cos and angular frequency is so easy to define in sin and cos and it is very easy to define angular frequency in terms of frequency i have shown you the equation how we can define it so solution of the system help us to understand the system so this second order differential equation we get a general solution in general equation we have a sin and a cosine function then we apply the boundary conditions like for, which will be help us to find out the cons value of constant a and b after applying this whole uh, whole boundary conditions we got our x value of x that is the displacement with time so this will be helpful for us if we want to draw a graph or we want to know at a specific time what is the displacement of the system this is very helpful so uh, we i have shown you the equation of both like i have generalized it also it will be helpful if you want to learn it 
A show the amplitude. Amplitude basically shows the maximum displacement of the system. Like for how much displacement is happening. Like ma spring is going from here. And mass is going from here to here. So this is its maximum displacement. Then it decreases because of the air friction and resistance. This is the amplitude that is called maximum displacement. Now phi is the phase constant. Phase constant depends on the starting position. Like it is not necessary that you will be getting a similar initial conditions initial condition can vary like your anything can be different like your you stretch it to some other distances or your initial conditions are something another so this phase constant help us to understand the starting condition and depends on the starting condition of the system then we interpret it and what we uh, get from this we get that the oscillation is periodic it is from minus a to a it is oscillatory because cos is oscillatory it is periodic it repeats itself it is oscillatory system it, it depends on time also and it depends on the initial value of the displacement it also depends on the initial velocity this whole thing we get the knowledge of this whole thing from just forming an equation of motion then potential energy of the system this potential energy is basically don't be confused it comes from the work how much work is done in the system then then work is converted to the potential energy and after solving we get the potential energy equals to half kx square and we also know that omega is equals to root k by that is our angular frequency which we defined earlier to simplify the equation of motion then so we know that we can write potential energy as half m omega square x square now let's discuss the second part of the system that is quantum harmonic oscillators we'll start with the intro quantum means uh, we are describing oscillation in terms of small systems like like we get to know how atoms vibrate and we got um, many things which are in on the quantum level we will be understanding that we know that oscillation is basically system going around its equilibrium position oscillating around its equilibrium position that is simply an harmonic oscillator so what is different in this harmonic oscillator so when we solve this schrodinger equation we get our wave function we will know that the energy is quantized in quantum oscillators quantized means it will have specific energies it will be discrete and they will not be continuous My means you can't think of any particle at any energy some energies can be forbid means they the particle cannot have that kind of energy first we need to do is we need to understand the system in this so we know from the classical our potential energy was half m omega square x square that means that was quadratic so we describe the schrodinger equation so we have a this quadratic potential is uh, confines the particles in which the particle oscillates so we will need to generate a schrodinger equation from which we will get our wave function so now we need to understand the quantum so it help what does it helps us it help us to uh, study uh, vibrating molecules atoms and lattice quantum level explanation of motion is given by this system now if we want to understand the motion of the quantum system we need to may be needing the help of the quant uh, schrodinger equation then from that schrodinger equation we will be having our wave functions our energy eigen values and these all things time independent schrodinger equation so it starts with the hermitian operator because it is an hamiltonian operator also hamiltonian operator when operates with your wave function gives you the energy eigen values and also the wave functions okay what do you understand by it? so it is an hermitian operators in mathematical physics you will know what a hermitian operator is if we apply hamiltonian operator with the wave function we will get energy eigen values that means we will get the values of energy and we will also get the wave function eigen wave function which means the wave function of the system so uh, hamiltonian operator we know what is hamiltonian operator so we have our minus h cut square by 2m d square by dx square it is basically energy energy operator it has total energy of the system it displays total energy of the system we have our potential energy we put it in this equation so we know the mass angular frequency omega and we have reduced planck's constant now to solve this whole system so we have two methods to solve this schrodinger equation 
First method is analytical method in which we solve the Schrodinger equation. We find out the, uh, we solve the Schrodinger equation, then we find out the eigenvalues, eigenfunctions, and we use Hermite polynomial in this solution. Second method is lab, which we'll use later operator. It is also known as algebraic method. We use matrices in this, and uh, we use the, uh, we take the help of the operator. So first I want to go with the analytical method. Like we have also done it before, like how we solve Schrodinger equation. It is a bit difficult of the both. We are doing revision here. So I will help you to interpret the answers. So in this, we, we know what we got our Hermitian operators. Then we apply it in on the wave function. Then we get, our, we solve it and we get our wave function, which I have shown you. Uh, I have shown you that NN is a normalization constant, HN is Hermite polynomial and this Hermite polynomials add oscillatory structure to the wave function and we uh, when we put n is equals to 0 we will get our ground state function and i have shown you the ground state function so psi 0 this you can see this is a gaussian function how you know that it is a gaussian function so gaussian function is a, uh, have a specific formation it has one constant then e it has it has e power minus alpha x square by 2 so this shows that this is a gaussian function which means it has no nodes nodes are what Nodes show uh, nodes are the points in which there is zero probability of the particle to be found at. Means if a system has nodes, at that node the particle cannot be found. Means it has zero probability of being there. Means there will be parts in the system in which there will be the, the particle cannot be there. It is most probable. So by because it is a Gaussian function, you will see that the maximum probability of the particle is at x is equals to zero means when uh, at the midpoint of this Gaussian function where it has the highest peak it has the maximum probability means the chances of a particle being there is the most we have seen the wave function now we understand that these both method help us to find out the wave function and the energy eigenvalues so after solving we get the energy eigenvalues also and that is n plus half h cut omega where n goes from 0 1 2 3 and it goes on where n is a quantum number Quant so what does n shows n shows the state of the system if n is 0 that means the system is at the ground state the energy will be minimum uh, minimum there how we know that the energy will be minimum minimum if you put e0 e0 means ground state energy where n is equals to 0 so we get half h cut omega so e depends on n n is a quantum number it is always 0 1 2 and 3 means the energy always will be discrete energy it will be quantized so ground state energy is zero point energy means even at the ground state the system has some energy and that is half h cut omega is it so so this is because of the heisenberg uncertainty principle which is says that the particle cannot have position and momentum zero at the same point means this particle cannot have a zero kinetic energy at any point so now you can see there's a graph so the first this line shows the potential energy curve we have drawn it with the help potential energy on the x-axis we have x so this graph is half m omega square x square why this is in this shape as you know that when we want to draw a quadratic quadratic polynomial we get a parabola so this is because of that it is looking like that simple now we when we put n equals to 0 we got half h cut omega if we put n equals to 1 we get 3 by 2 h cut omega so this shows how with increasing n the energy is also increasing but the levels are discrete and quantized okay this was easy to understand now uh, we have we have got our wave function which will help us to define how the system will uh, behave so the best part is if you draw a graph of the system eager how did we find a way how we draw these graphs so these graphs uh, basically we put the values we get the values we put, make draws graph if you use the coding in scilab you can easily find out how we got these graphs so i am only showing you the graph if you want me to give, give you the detailed uh, how these these graphs are like this I will be providing you that. You can comment down below. What do you see in these graphs? First thing you see is the whole system. I have drawn, first we are doing the wave function graphs. So I have drawn for you the wave function for the ground state wave function, then psi1, then psi2, and then psi3. 
so what you see uh, basically see that they are all symmetrical with the zero they are symmetrical function first thing which you see is they are harmonic you can see that and second thing what you see is in the ground state energy you see that they this is the diagram for the gaussian function what does this wave function graph shows you they show you where the particle will be found in the system like uh, these wave function graphs shows you that at this energy like at energy e1 you see the xi1 graph you will see that at these point the particles will be found so how we know we do experiments when we see uh, we do the experiments we measure where the particle is found so this is a theoretical part when we do the experiment that is the practical part which will if we when we do the practical we get that yes theoretical part was correct these are the places where we find out the particle is there so these graphs are very helpful they help us to know that where the particle is actually there in the system it is not everywhere in the quantum system it is at some places and these places can be seen with the help of graphs at different energy it has different graphs means it has different places there the particle can be so what you can see i have drawn you uh, the system minus a to a these lines shows the classical system so if it was a mass spring system the mass will be going from minus a to a so the system shows that at uh, e e0 energy the particle is going from minus a to a which is small then it uh, the when the energy increases e1 so the, at this system the classical system is going from minus a to a which has increased in size i have shown you that in the graphs also when it is i3 the minus a to a increases okay now you have seen this what we further can see from these wave function so after understanding the wave function graph we can easily draw the probability graph how do we calculate probability we we just do we put our limits to the system then we take a complex conjugate of the wave function we multiply it with the com, uh, with the wave function and we get our probability density so we def, uh, we just show it with the help of xi x whole square right so basically the graph which was in the negative of the system will come on the positive so we'll get all positive peaks in the probability function so what we are drawing is probability graphs what they shows they shows that what is the most probable places in which the particle can be found what are least probable places where the particle will be found so it shows the probability so this shows the probability of a particle being there at different places i have done is i have shown you the classical graph what will be happening in the classical system and i have shown you what will be happening in the quantum system in same graph in the first graph what you see is the the probability of the classical system so i want to explain it to you when we goes from minus a to a at the end points the potential energy is very high this at these points the uh, the mass if it is a mass spring system the mass is uh, highly probable to see at these end points so you can see in graph at minus a and a the probability is going like infinity means they are getting maximum seen at this position and least seen at the equilibrium position but what you see in quantum probability you see that it is it is exactly opposite to the classical probability system quantum probability is maximum at the equilibrium position maximum at the zero and it decreases on the both side and one thing more which we have seen on the wave function that the quantum probability goes beyond the classical now second probability graph you see that we got, when we take xi1 x square probability system what do we see that a minus a and a increase we got our peaks both upward we see that we got here node also this node is the point where there is the minimum probability of the system means the particle is not there so here we see that the node node at x0 means when energy is this high the particle is not at x0 you can also see the probability of the classical system and in third also i have shown you the nodes of the system where the particle cannot be there there's one thing more i want to explain it to you what uh, what if we have a system of psi 20 let's say we want to uh, calculate the probability of psi 20 okay so we will get so many peaks at this this point what you see is the peaks are higher at the end points where minus a and a is there and then the peaks are decreasing and uh, what you see this is basically like the classical system means what happens is 
because of the uncertainty principle the small fluctuation of peaks and dips cannot be calculated which means when the psi value is very high which means the quantum n value is very high means energy of the system is very high it basically behaves as a classical system this shows the disagreement which we have seen in the ground state between the classical quantum has gone when the energy becomes so high which means if n increases the quantum system goes toward the classical system and which we you can also see easily see from the graph and this shows that energy becomes continuous because we can can cannot calculate the peaks and the dips of the system interesting right you can see in the wave function of psi not the uh, in every wave function like psi not psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 we see that the graph of the graph of the wave function shows us that it goes beyond the classical system means it goes beyond minus a and a which you can easily see on the graph now let's more learn more about the system we got our energy values we got our wave function and now we have more things now let's understand more about the system so let's cal calculate the expectation value of the position what does expectation value of position means so we have a formula for this in quantum mechanics how we calculate the, this like i have shown you the formula of this but what the actual meaning of this what is the actual meaning actual meaning is it is the average value of at which the particle will be formed how do we calculate the average we take all the points we take, uh, divide by it, the total and then we get an average position means we can take an overall look how what will be the overall position average position of the particle so how do we do it we do it experimental procedure on solving this expectation well value of position we get our expectation value of position equals to zero which interprets us so many things so what it shows first thing it shows that there is symmetry in the system why it shows that there is symmetry this means that the particle is equally uh, equal likely to be everywhere in the system the system is symmetrical because our potential energy is symmetrical our poten our potential energy is symmetrical our wave function is symmetrical this means that the the particle is equally likely to be on either side of the origin we can see all the graphs we have seen they are symmetrical so the average position of the particle is equally likely to be on this side also in this side also so the average expectation average of this this all becomes zero so this explains the symmetry of the system then we have expectation value of position squared why do we do it so we have a formula on quantum mechanics i have shown you that we when we solve it we get the value of this that is n plus half h cut by m omega but we need to interpret it so what we interpret from it so this explains us the spread of the uh, system spread means when you saw a see a system how from where to where it will go like when you stretch a mass of a spring from where to where it will go how much this is shown by this x square its expectation value tells us that so x square is always positive because it is x square obviously when the particle displacement increases the energy levels also increases then we also calculate delta x why we calculate delta x now we have our average position we know how far a particle can go from the average position we want to determine how a particle can deviate from the average position mean position we want to calculate the deviation of the system so this delta x help us to calculate that so we calculated for the ground state state system we have our x square value we have our expectation value so we put that all and we calculate the delta x i have shown you there also you can easily see that now there there is also expectation value of momentum so this like like i said expectation value of the position we have it for the momentum also this means the average value of the momentum in a particular energy how the uh, what is the average momentum of the system <clears throat> so we got that our average position of expectation value of momentum is zero which shows uh, we i have also shown you the formula of the how we calculated so what we see that it shows that there is symmetry means the particle is moving from right to left then it is also moving from right left to right means there is average momentum of the system value is zero 
then we calculate the expectation value of the squared momentum so after applying the formula uh, we get the momentum spread this value of momentum spread tells us that how momentum changes from the equilibrium position let the particle go from the equilibrium position to a certain point and how much the momentum spreads then we calculate the delta p similarly to we did for the delta x and we calculate our value now in our certainty principle we know that we take delta x and delta p we calculated it here also and we get to know that this help us to know that the precision of momentum and the position like we can cannot calculate position momentum simultaneously for the system when we put n equals to zero we are calculating for the ground state and we get that delta x and delta p is equals to h cut by 2 this shows that even ground state the particle position and momentum cannot be zero <coughs> means if even delta x is zero the whole thing will be zero but it is not zero means the position and momentum are not zero at all this is all about harmonic oscillators if you want to know more comment down below and thank you for watching